Okay, greetings everyone. This is Gerard, uh, Energy for Filipino Soul Magazine. It's official. I am done with uh, live. I just tried it again and, and it didn't even work. So anyway, so let me do it the old-fashioned way. I pre-record them. Um, yesterday I tried posting a video and live with uh, with Dominic and I frolicking in the water, you know, just to rub salt in the wound of all y'all who got like in the teen weather and snow up to the yang yang, you know, uh, on the east coast and west coast. Cause if you don't think it get cold in Vegas, let me tell you, you got another thing coming. You know, the desert at nighttime when that sun go down, it gets it gets real bad out there. But anyway, when I first moved to Vegas, I was like, wow, you know one thing I miss? I miss water. There's, there's no beaches. There's no. There's a drudge in the desert. This is Vegas. There's no there's, there's, there's no coastal line. I said, oh, okay. So anyway, so yesterday I tried posting a video live, and I got blocked because of um, a mint condition, uh, pretty brown eyes. Um, and so the whole video gave me an option if I want to post it, indicating that I do own the rights to the song or uh, to delete it, because I don't. So of course, you know, I haven't posted it. I haven't made one decision one way or the other, because it was about Diamond and I. We were frolicking up in the water, you know. I wanted to rub salt in the wound of all you guys who have uh, teen weather. And uh, I promised myself I wasn't going to talk on this one because all I want to do is still frolic in the water while you're freezing your gonads off on the East Coast. You know, so anyway, so, uh, but um, uh, uh, one time I, one of my videos got got uh, blocked because of Al Green. Let's stay together. Because uh, uh, it says some countries, you know, your video will still play, but some countries it won't. And so it kind of got me that Al Green was a, was being able to play Let's Stay Together. I'm trying to think, what does United Kingdom got against Al Green? You know, so, but then that's no surprise. Because here in the Philippines, there's a song here that's very much frowned upon if you play it. And that's Frank Sinatra's I Did It My Way. If you play it, um, or if you listen to how some people say, they say it's against the Lord to play the song. Uh, the others say that it's not very favorable to play the song for the simple way, which I play it because it's on my playlist. But um, one of the reasons why, because it became a representation of gang violence and gang songs. So uh, it's not a song that they want to hear you play because of, for whatever reason. But anyway, uh, Frank Sinatra, my, I Did It My Way, is not uh, 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 a song you want to play. You know, I decided I wasn't going to talk this much because, again, I still want to frolic in the water. I just want, want you guys to just watch me splashing around. But you know what? If, if I was in the United States, I would be talking about Donald Trump, you know, because why? There's no sense in my talking about Chuck Schumer or, uh, or, uh, or uh, Chuck, or talk about you know, any other congressmen, you know, in the office. You know, I go for the head man, you know, and so I'm here in the Philippines and I talk about, you know, President Duterte. Why? Because he's the head man. You know, and uh, so you know, it's 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 very it's very it's very good to talk about you know uh, news around the world because, like I always suggested, that it's good for you to every day pick up the newspaper or every other day, or at least three times a week, at least the first read the first Jerry Jerry Jerry. Whenever I start talking too fast, I have to pause and say the name Jerry Jerry for um, Jerry Pittman, who is the husband of. Uh, Kalamita Pittman, who um, were close friends to Bonnie Hilton Sweeney, who was the founder of the Free Grammy Party. And we know if there's a heaven up above, Bonnie, she's teaching people how to love. We love you, Bonnie, and we know you love this more. And Bonnie, and Jerry always said, I talk too fast. So whenever I find myself talking too fast, or my thoughts started rallying too close together, I say his name. So anyway, so, uh, uh, so now I'm here in the Philippines, so it only makes it's good to read the first three pages uh, at least three times a week about what's going on not only around you but in the world and that's what I do so um, um, uh, the third day son is uh, has decided uh, to step down as being the mayor of one of the province you know um, citing that um, reasons being uh, oh yeah uh, okay reason being because of, of the pressure, you know, um, the accusations that are put on him. Uh, there was a, a big tanker that came through. You see, the Philippines have lanes that when they uh, that they get expected when big tankers come through, and depending upon the security risks, you know, it depends upon the color and the level of degree of search that the vehicle uh, goes through before it enters the country. 
Well, they knew this one tanker was coming through that had like six, 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 uh, uh, so many thousand kilos of shabu. Shabu is methamphetamines. And it got okay to go through the, the lower level of security search. And so, uh, allowing all these drugs to come into the country. They have subsequently gotten a lot of drugs, you know, uh, but, but the fact of the matter is that somebody okayed it. And so one of the brokers in the deal who okayed it, uh, or who was part of that, um, that deception, I uh, mentioned uh, Pablo uh, pa uh, Paloco, uh, who is the, the uh, P-A-O-L-A, -A, the third day son, as someone who was involved in it. You know, but although they never could prove it or, you know, they just mentioned his name and the fact that they would mention his name cast a shadow on him. And President the Third Day got to the point to where he says that if my son's involved with drug smuggling, he says, I will resign right now. He says, I know my son, you know, one of those type of things. Just think if Donald Trump said that, said that. I know my son Eric is, is not involved in the Russian probe. If he was, I would resign right now. I can picture that. But anyway, but it turned out the reason why he's, he's, he's doing it because, number one, like I said, the pressures of, uh, of being always under the cloud is hard to do your job, but that's politics. But also, he cites the fact that, uh, you know, he has problems, issues that need to be, um, be taken care of from his first marriage. There's been a lot of public, public squabbling between his daughter from his first marriage, and, and he, he wants to make her the number one thing in his life, I guess, and, and really mend those bridges and be a father to his daughter, which I, I cannot, I, you know, I, I, I can't knock that, man. I, I can't knock that. You know, if you get an opportunity to build those bridges, you know, but by all means do so. You know, but here, this is the headline, and I'm gonna start swimming a little bit, and maybe I'll tell you a little more. It says, the war on drugs is largely successful. You see? Largely successful, for whatever that means. For those of you who are still naysayers, may say, well, they're still, they're still being killed. I mean, mind you, that these are his his haters in the newspaper who always seem to talk bad about the things and post some of the negative things and he even pointed out how negative the journal uh, journalists are and they should do more to unite the country rather than tear it apart. So for them to say something like that, it must mean something. Let me get a couple of strokes, rub it in, and I'll talk to you in a minute. Oh, I'm going into business as a pig farmer. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, if you want to ask me a question about the Philippines, about moving too fast, or achieving your dreams and your goals, or a Hollywood story, I pause every now and then. And um, well, I can't do that. I'm not live. Oh, I'm not live. Okay. So um, yeah. But okay. Let me get this broken. Okay.
lot of things go through my mind. But, um... You know, I have a friend who, uh... Well, let me say that this way. When I was coming up, uh, I was 18 when I found out that my father was in my father. And, and I was celebrating a home birthday. Let like, you know the story. But then I found out that the father who I thought was my father, he had another family. And I remember her name was Catherine. Catherine. My father and my mother, after my younger brother was, had, had died, my mother showed up in North Carolina where we were at. But after I don't know how many years, three, four, I don't know how many years we were down there. And just came and said, I'm your mother, you know, one of those type of things. And uh, took us. And we moved to the west side of Manhattan on 72nd Street uh, between Amsterdam and Columbus. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of our life there, but, it, it, you know, it, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. You know, but what I wanted to point out was that, uh, my father was also back in our lives. And my brother and I, we used to go, allowed to go see him on weekends. You know, and, uh, at this time, I was taking learning to play the trumpet. The flight of the bumblebee is the only thing I know how to play. <laughs> because it, <laughs> it made no sense. And my mother had a friend named Bill Odom. Bill Odom was a real cool, 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 cool white boy. He had to be the coolest white boy I ever knew. You know, that was after my first introduction to cool. But Bill was a was a jazz player. You know, he, you know, he was a musician, man. You know, he wanted me to learn to play the trumpet, so he tried to help my trumpet. They drank, you know. My mother, every, that time they drank. You know, I really drink a quarter uh, Smirnoff uh, vodka a day. You know, I can't stand Smirnoff vodka to this day. I can't vodka period. If I if I drink vodka period, I get these migraine headaches. I think it's my mother's curse telling me don't 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 fool with it. Don't fool with it. No, sorry, don't drink drink. They don't drink vodka at all. And uh 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 in my um I was put into a class, a music class, and there was a lot of people, a lot of kids. <laughs> Playing a whole different, a lot of different notes that everybody else was playing. Everybody was playing to a different thing, and I was just so frustrated and so lost that I lost interest in playing the trumpet. But I still would masquerade, you know. Every, every time my class came up, grab my my trumpet case, and I would walk out the door. But what I would do is I walk out the door, and my mother's friend, she used to buy me a quart of. Smearing a vodka, and I take the trumpet out and put the vodka in. And so I'm walking down the street. This is how I was like, I don't know what, 13, 14, something like that, with a quarter vodka in my trumpet case. But um, I ended up being gotten so drunk that um, see, during that time, what kids did was that if their parents went away during a weekend uh, or for a holiday, you you once the word got out that your parents were gonna be there. Guess where the party was at? Your house. You know, uh, we grew up with Harry Belafonte's kids, Joanne Woolworth's kids. You know, uh, you know, um, you know, we, you know, at Riverside Park, which is a place to hang out. You know, a lot of things. Uh, uh, so anyway, so um, uh, I got drunk so bad one time, so drunk. I remember I was directing traffic on Amsterdam, on Broadway, Broadway, I was so drunk. And this one girl, her name is Debbie Cosminer. i never forget Debbie. I ended up in the park and my head was in her lap and I was just throwing up, throwing up, throwing up. Uh, and uh, Debbie 
was also a musician. She was learning to play the flute. And her and I used to meet in the park, and I, I would sit with her while she had a little thing, Scholar, Scholar Fair by Simon and Garfunkel. And she would just play for me. She was just she was a little bit older than I was, you know, but the fact of the matter is that she would play. She would play a clarinet for me. A flute, clarinet, flute, 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 clarinet, flute, clarinet, clarinet, flute. She would play it for me. And um, I enjoyed it. You know, so anyway, so my brother and I used to go see our father. So this one particular time, uh, uh, we went to see, and he introduced us to Kathleen. Kathleen was my father's, you know, woman for the next family he had. And uh, although I was young, but, you know, I, you know, I liked Kathleen. You know, I, uh, I, I look back now and I wish that, you know, if that's what kept us apart was, was the thought that we might reject her because, you know, my father was raising her family rather than us, per se, you know, uh, you know, that wouldn't have been the reason, you know, uh, you know, I, I still would have loved to have been a part of because it was more important for me to be around my father. You know when when you know when a man chooses a you know when, you know when a man makes a commitment to a woman and he's fulfilled that commitment. And fulfilling it means you know you know he uh, you know he uh, you know uh, uh, she got old and she passed away. You know for whatever reason for illness, accidents, murder, you know crime or whatever. You know he's fulfilled that his commitment to her. You know you know he's 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 did what he needed to do as a man to take care of his woman. Okay, you have kids. But now you have another woman in your life. And she has a family. And and although although your you know, your father is doing more for them than they are doing for his ex's kids, you know, it's understandable. You know, it's understandable. You know, it's probably, it's probably, you know, uh, not accepted to do nothing. You should make attempt to do something. But then uh, you have to understand him. He's not turning his back on you. You know, he's got a new woman in his life. He's got someone making him happy now again. You know, he's in love again. You know, he is fulfilling his obligation for the second time to be with a woman. You know, now, up in years now, what happened was that one day my brother and I was going we to go see him. One, one weekend we didn't go see him. We, we told our mother we were going to go see him, but we didn't. My brother went wherever he went, and I went wherever I went. And so, you know, when it finally came home, my mother said, you know, where were you? And I said, I was at such and such when I was, you know, I was out you know, there. You know, oh yeah, I, I said, I was with dad. And she said, well, where were you? She said, we were with dad. You told him, you know, every year we spend Saturday night with dad. Now my father used to take us to 42nd Street. He used to take us to the arcades, you know, arcade. You know, we, we had fun with him, you know? And so she said, I'm gonna ask you one more time. She said, where were you? And we said, we were with dad. And she said, you couldn't have, because he died tonight. He died last night. And man, that hit me like a bolt of lightning. You know, it, it hit me so hard that it, there was ever a time in my life when I ran away, that was the time I ran away, was when I found out that I lied being with my father and knowing that night we were supposed to be with him and he died. He died of cirrhosis of the liver. So, um, uh, I, 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 I didn't, they couldn't bury my father because they couldn't find me because because I refused to go home. I, I, I just didn't. I, I just couldn't go home knowing that that, that 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 you know I was supposed to be there and I wasn't. You know, and he died. My brother finally called Debbie. Not Debbie Cosmo. This is a different Debbie. And uh, I was at her house. At this time, I remember clearly because. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly had just come out. And um, I was just hiding. I was just hiding, and that soundtrack was playing. 
and my brother called me and said, you know, come home. And so um, I came home, and so we ultimately buried my father. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is because no matter what you remember, and, and I look at my own children, you know, I don't care what you what you remember or what you think you remember or what you know and what you think you know, you won't know till you sit down with me and talk about it. Because there's three sides to every story. There's your side, my side, and there's, well, there's the truth, you know? So, um, if you're in that situation today, where's that? Your father is with another woman after fulfilling his obligation. And you're still, you're still holding anger toward the woman because you think she took her away. She took him away from you. You know, he was able to do what he wanted to do because of your kids. You know what I'm saying? You know, and your father's getting up in years. He's not gonna be around forever, you know. And you and your siblings should say, "Come on, let's go see Dad." Well, you haven't seen in 20 years or something like this. The three of you, or the five of you, or the six of you together. You know, go sit down with them and watch the joy in his heart to see that his children have come home. You know, and it might mean you swallowing a little crow. It might mean her swallowing a little crow, but you're adults now, you know? You can't hold people responsible for things that you, you didn't like as a child, or things you don't understand, or you didn't understand, or you were told and wasn't told as a child. You're an adult now, grow up, you know? Because you know what? Because once it's over with, once it's over with, all that woulda, coulda, shoulda bullshit is gone, you know? so. My advice to any anybody out there who 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 are, are who who hasn't seen someone or or are disliking someone, a rather family member for whatever reason, and you know, just like the Hatfield McCoys, or or you know, you know, why are you feuding? I don't know. We just keep feuding, you know, just like you know, just like in gangs, you know, why we hate the Bloods and the Crips? Why we? I don't know, man. It's just something that we do, you know, you know, and you know, find out before it's too late. Why not too late? And bring some joy into someone's life because there's someone waiting to see you. Someone's waiting to hear what you have to say. Someone's waiting for you to tell them the story. I know on, on, on my Facebook, I, I once pointed, uh, 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 posted these pink receipts that I was mailing out from prison. I was mailing them out for prison because I was still paying allowance. I was, I was still paying, the, you know, uh, you know, some phone bills. You know, I, I was making payments while I'm in prison. You know, you know, you know, giving to you know to my daughters. You know what I'm saying? You know, money given to their mother. You know, uh, they got a check every month because of my disability. You know, you know, you know, being a veteran. You know, but then you know, I I, I don't think they really know. I don't think they ever were told the truth. I think there was a time whenever when she was on the phone and rah, 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 saying these horrible things, I, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, are my children in the room? Are my children listening to you while you talk to your their father like that? She said, yeah, right here. I said, why do you talk to me like that? With them sitting in the room. But when they weren't in the room, she, hi, how are you? I said, let me guess, the children aren't there. She said, no, they're outside playing. I said, I can always tell, Diana. I can always tell when Gianna and Janelle are in the room because of the vulgar things you say to me. You think they forgot that? Do you think the things that 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 that, that you spewed all over me, you know, while I was in prison or, or rather, I, you know, when I was, when I would call them or, or whatever, when they were young, do you think they forgot about all that stuff? No, because no one's no one's taking the time to take it out of there, or, or to replace it with 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 positive things, or, or you know, or because of your anger, because of what you did, you know, you know, because you wanted to do, and you accused me of making you do it. I'm not gonna go into it. You know what I'm saying? You know, but I want to let you know, you took the love, you robbed me, 
the love that I had or that I was able to give or wanted to give or be a father to. You took that away from me. Thank God Janelle is coming around. And even then, it's like walking on eggshells. So those of you, I'm telling you right now, make amends. Make amends to the man who bothered you, whose loins you come from, for whatever reason. Be grateful that you have life today, and you are alive today because of him. And so what? You know how many times I watch these TV shows where fathers have sexually abused their daughters, physically abused their daughters, abandoned their daughters, all this shit like this, and then at the end of the day, they said, oh, but he's still my father. Do you know how many times I, I, I pray that that was something that would happen to Gianna and Janelle? Say, Mom, you know what? In spite of all the things you said, he's still my father. You know what my, you know what my oldest daughter calls me? Her bio dad. I never give, I never forget that. She said, you my bio dad. says, don't talk to me about my family, your family. The one I created, your family. This is Gerard and Chief in Filipino Soul Magazine. Dreams are nothing more than plans awaiting action. Never disrespect the elder, always pull something up. And sometimes, sometimes, yeah, you might be the only one to see your vision. I'm still seeing the vision. And if you're lucky enough to have a woman, like I do, treat her like a lady. And ladies, if you're lucky enough to have a good man, make him feel like a king. I'll always love him more. And for some of you players who recognize that music, because I'm not playing any more music that's singing because I don't want to be blocked. 